Brad Stevens here, founder and CEO of Outsource Access, outsourceaccess.com. And we are here with another little series we put together called OA Team Insights, Team Profiles. Uh, we kind of go behind the scenes with some of our staff, our amazing staff here in the Philippines that are working uh, with clients all over, all over the world. Uh, for context, Outsource Access, we are really vetted and trained virtual staffing company uh, here uh, in the Philippines, providing vet and trained talent and, and operations and marketing and sales and all kinds of support work for clients all over the world and all kinds of different industries. Our very industry kind of agnostic from manufacturing to service to speakers to uh, you know tool manufacturers, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about. Um, but uh, excited to take people behind the scenes and, and part of what I've loved doing and growing our business, we've grown to about 480 employees in three and a half years, um, supporting in a, in, a, in a support service basis for different clients. And a lot of it's been about sharing the story behind the scenes, you know, about what the Philippines is like, the amazing talent here, uh, why it's such a desirable place to, to work with, uh, with resources, um, as we'll kind of share uh, in our journey. So we'll kick off here with Miss Joy, um, who's been with us. I've actually been on a tour here in the Philippines on my recent trip, and we allow our staff to work virtually. We have an office in Cagayan de Oro, but we also, um, Cagayan de Oro, I'm getting my pronunciation better. Uh, and then we have people working remote in different cities, Bukidnon and Iligan City where we're here. We have about 100 people that are working here. So we, behind you here are a bunch of tables. We were doing a meet and greet, even a little singing and guitar playing together. Amazing musical talent, by the way, in the Philippines. Um, but it gets a chance to get to know each other and uh, I got a chance to personally meet everyone, including Joy here, which we'll dive into. So uh, thanks for being with me today. I appreciate it. Yes, it's an honor. <laughs> no, my honor. You guys are the foundation of what we built our organization on and the great work that you do and the experience you provide for our clients, we appreciate it. So um, so just a little bit about, about you. So are you from Iligan? No, uh, basically I'm from Baroy. It's a municipality in Lanao del Norte. It's two hours from Iligan City actually. Okay. So going from Iligan, it's going uh, north. So Lanao del Norte is the land of beauty and bounty in the Philippines. <laughs> so you might want to drop by if you have some time. <laughs> yes. Uh, beauty so, and bounty. Yes, the land of beauty and bounty. <laughs> nice. And so how long have you been in, in Iligan? Uh, it's since 2010. 12, yes. Oh, 10 so years, here. yes. I've oh, been, been here, here well. 10 years, yes. I, okay. I graduated from a university here in Iligan City and then started working here in Iligan City. That's why oh, I'm nice. currently here, yes. Awesome. And we'll, we'll dive in what brought you to, to OA, but learn a little bit more about your. So you grew up into brothers and sisters? Yes. Uh, I, we are three in the, uh, siblings. I'm the eldest and the breadwinner. And I'm also the only daughter in the family. So I've got two younger brothers. And they're still currently uh, studying. And thanks to Ultras Access, I've been able to finance their studies at the same time support my family. So it's really a oh, great wow. blessing. Yes. That's incredible. I know that part of your, of your journey. So yes. It's, uh, in the Philippines here, a big part of the culture is, I mean, in many cultures, it's, you know, family is really important, but here they take it to an, another level in terms of the commitment uh, that children have, particularly taking care of their, their family and their, and their parents as they kind of age and, and supporting them and, and even siblings, it yes. sounds like, two younger brothers and us, mm -hmm. us boys need a lot of guidance. Yes. We, we mature a little later, so I'm sure, yes. you, I'm sure you've provided financial support and a lot of mentoring and yes. guiding them with the ladies and so forth as well. Yes, it's kind of sometimes a headache, but <laughs> then we, we grow it out of love and we do it out of love and same way as we do with our work, we do it with love. Yes. I can see that. And, you see these infectious smiles. Uh, this is the kind of infectious smile you see so much in the, in the Philippines. It started with Jay Sell's infectious smile from the beginning when I met her, just a, just a joyousness. And especially with the challenges you guys navigate. I and mean, what is there, like 26 typhoons that happen yes. a year in the Philippines? I mean, some, you know, some are smaller and some are larger, but, yes. um, but just the level of tenacity and grit and resilience, I think, is the best word to kind of describe yes. um, you guys have. And it translates into everything you do in life uh, yes. as well. Yes. So I grew up, so you're the eldest, and, um, and so came back to here for, for college, and then so what did you do right after you graduated initially? Uh, my first job experience was in sales. Uh, actually, before graduating, since I majored in entrepreneurial marketing, so oh, cool. yes, a lot of my subjects or courses I took up were more of sales, but then I realized I don't want to do a sales job right after graduation, wherein I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't have an idea if I could really do the job so while studying I had a part-time job which is in sales and it's part 
the uh, financial advisor. So oh. I tried to apply what I learned in the classroom in outside the classroom. So it was a nice experience. Eventually, it led me to some better job right after graduation. So uh, formally, uh, it was more of a property account officer, my first okay. uh, corporate job. And then I went into academ. I actually to taught students. I was a lecturer in the college where I graduated. I was oh, hired. Cool. Yes, I was invited by our, uh, my previous professor. And then before, uh, while studying, uh, while having, uh, while having me as a lecturer in the department. And what were you, what were you teaching on? Yes, uh, yeah. it's more of management, marketing management. management. Yes, okay. and I was also studying for a master at that time. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Busy girl. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, but then it only uh, it only lasted for one year. Uh, my academic career because I felt like I'm not yet enough for my students. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt like I don't have enough corporate experience, especially that I've been teaching management courses. So I wanted to dive in more into the corporate and experience more. So I went outside the academe, and so it went to financial institution. I worked with the bank. Okay. And then I found it was actually a pandemic, although a lot of us uh, treated the pandemic as a crisis, but also it also it became a blessing at some point because uh, during that time, bank, banks were, uh, uh, they closed very early. So I had a lot of free time. So I thought I might use my time more productively. So I looked for, in for an online job. And then I found outsource access. So uh, I was very hesitant at first, really, to be honest, because I have no experience when it comes to virtual assistant. And I'm not that techy. But as you, as you have mentioned, mentioned that outsource access does not just scale up the businesses, but it also leverage individuals uh, like me as a VA to learn more and be more of what we are capable of. So thank you. Well, you've had a, uh, well, thank you for sharing that. It's yes. kind of cool to hear your journey and path that brought us brought us together. And yes. I'm super excited. We got a chance to know each other a little bit better and actually know really well your client um, that you, you work with, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. but, but that's really cool. So in entrepreneurial marketing, what a great like major. I don't, I haven't, I don't know, I haven't seen U.S. universities, I think, and I'm mm -hmm. sure there are, but that's a great, uh, a great major. I'm um, just wanted yes. to, I'm curious about that. What did, what is entrepreneurial marketing when you were learning it? What's the entrepreneurial angle in marketing that they taught you? Yes, uh, we have this uh, specific courses. Uh, though marketing is a very broad, uh, sure. yes, uh, it's a very broad industry. But we have more, uh, we focus more on entrepreneurship in a way that uh, part of our courses is we uh, come up with a startup business and then we. Uh, as the students, we manage that business to be. Uh, oh, gotcha. Yes, we we do. We really do the basic uh, uh, part of the, the foundation of every business, like the from business planning to management to HR, everything All in the management. Yes, yeah, so with a small it, team. Yes, so with a small business? team in a group. So we did what it was the in business a group. You did. Uh, it was more of a. Uh, we touch on healthcare. It's a fertility tracker. tracker. So we ins we do have. I think uh, as of now, we do have a mobile app for fertility tracker. But before then, we had this. We incorporated a product that could be used by uh, physically challenged or those uh, with this. Uh, what we call the the blind people uh, i thought uh, that sure. one yes so the yes of uh, those people we visually impaired yes yeah. visi visually impaired yes thank you for sure. the word so we we develop a product that would help them uh track their fertility tracker uh, their fertility with though with that with a tool so they can just uh, attach that tool and then they can eventually know especially the female if they are uh, they're fertile or not and if they wanted to successfully bear a child, then they would do the, the activity with their couple uh, on the fertile days. So that's what we did. We, what a really unique yes, we, niche. Yes, so we, we, we uh, team up with the local LGUs, uh, the LGUs in certain barangays and did what some... What does LGU stand for? Uh, local government unit. Okay. So we partnered with them and then we did some FGDs or the focus group discussions to uh, 
discover more needs with the uh, uh, visually impaired individuals. Wow, so that is a what, cool story. <laughs> What a great, I mean, you know, business is all about the niches. And A, obviously you're servicing, a, it's a great support to provide for people that don't have that support, yes. but just to find niches that you can you can add value. Wow, yes. so that's, that's entrepreneurial marketing. So that was a great answer to that question. I wasn't sure exactly what that was, what that was, but uh, you actually learn how to create a business and shape yes. it up. So. so the entrepreneurial spirit, you see you travel down the streets in the Philippines. I mean, there's tons of micro stores everywhere. So the entrepreneurial spirit is, is, is strong here yes. uh, across the board. So. So that led into your skill sets, that led you to the different paths you've taken to the, to the bank and then ultimately kind of to, uh, you know, to outsource access. And so let's dive into sort of what you're doing directly with your client. And uh, your client's Colby McConnell, actually, yes. you know really well. He and I are both part of an EO entrepreneurs organization. We're both members of the EO Atlanta chapter. So, so I'm in the U.S., kind of our U.S. headquarters in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, he's actually down in Auburn. He makes the yes. trek back and, back and forth yeah. with a company called uh, Sonic Tools. Yes. And, um, so he'll love seeing this. I'm excited to show it to him. <laughs> Um, so let's talk a little bit about how you know your pairing and experience, and how long you've been working with him, um, and just describe sort of what that experience has been like, and, and then some specifics about the kind of things that you're doing to support him. Yes. Yeah, so I've been working with Sonic Tools for uh, since I was onboarded. So they were my first clients, and and up until now. So I've been uh, with them for ten months already, and nice. it's been a great journey. I got to know Kobe uh, during the interview, so he personally interviewed me. Yeah. And as you have mentioned that the Philippines is prone to typhoon, so that's one of the first questions he asked me during the interview if I was okay at that time because it was uh, January and there was a typhoon that hit the Philippines at that time. So, wow. And successfully, uh, th uh, by that time, he also interviewed with Olivia. So Olivia is his operations manager and I directly work with her, work with her right now. So with Sonic Tools, uh, I'm glad that before onboarding, before they have given me the task, uh, I I had the time to get to know the company, so I've been I, I was tasked first to get to know them very well and and what they are doing in the industry, where they stand in the industry. So, uh, Can you give a little boilers for those that don't know, like a little bit about their business and just how do they describe it? Yeah, so Tonic Tools is a company that uh, manufactured a a. a um, tools when, where you can use a garage or in the automotive, aviation, so they are present in different industry. Uh, automotive, aviation, educational for those students taking up. Right. Uh, yes, so the, uh, even in the, the government, yes, the government and the military. So you can, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of those industries are with Sonic Tools and also partnering with them when it comes to sponsorship. So it's the first time that I got interested with, with tools since <laughs> I've been in marketing and I don't have really an idea when it comes to tools. So with their product, it I got really interested. Like, how can a garage be this gorgeous? <laughs> so <laughs> I have seen yes. some of them. Actually, one of my buddies is a client of his, and I've seen, and, and it's just it's it's very pretty. Like yes. it's, you don't want to use the tools, get any yes. grease on them because it looks too nice, right? Yes. How can a garage be this gorgeous? That was my <laughs> state statement. So <laughs> yes. Mm -mm. And so to unpack some of the specific things that, that kind of you're doing, you know, for them, um, what are some of the tasks that you kind of start? I mean, I know it kind of evolves, right? With yes. clients, you sort of figure out this first set of things and then as they start learning to work with you and you, you with yes. them, it just continues to unroll and it really catches momentum yes. as you start to learn more about the business and they see what you're capable of. And I always say that, I always tell people, hey, I can tell you how great all this is, but it's not until you actually start working with one of our team members and you see their competency, their ability and what they're capable of, you'll build the confidence to unpack more and more, yes. you know, kind of with them. So if that, it sounds like that maybe was probably your, your journey. Mm -hmm. So just share a little bit like what, what did you start doing with them and how has it kind of evolved? Yeah, so before, as I've mentioned, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been tasked to get to know the company and later on, uh, as I get, to, uh, I, I get to work with them, they have given me tasks which involves in lead management, uh, data analytics, sales metrics, and currently I've been doing daily web reports which involves the revenue tracking. Uh, mm. I've been using tools like Pipedrive and Big Commerce for order management. So oh, wow. yes. And so you <laughs> had used these before, right? So you had to kind of get up to speed yes, on them. Yes, I've never <laughs> had any experience with those tools before. But thanks to Sonic, Sonic Tools and of course OA for giving me this opportunity. Yes. No, it's uh, 
And a lot of a lot of these tools that businesses use, right? I mean, a lot of the mm -hmm. CRMs and things, a lot of business owners just use a fraction of what they're capable of yes. because they just don't have the time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that when, when they get a, a team member with us that kind of supports and plugs in with their business, they start squeezing a lot more juice out of a lot of the tools and resources because they got somebody bright and sharp and engaged and curious about beautiful garages <laughs> like Joy um, to take interest in their business mm -hmm. and, um, and to help them grow and, and start using those tools. Um, and so it sounds like, and the other thing is like, it sounds like you've built a good relationship with them. So you've got to, because that kind of gets to become a part of their team and so, has a relationship kind of blossomed and you guys have gotten better to know one another? Yes, and uh, also with working with them, they have given me uh, also the, the free space somewhat like they allows me to work independently. Mm -hmm. So they, I felt I am trusted with the task. So they asked me if I, if I do need more information of a task or not. So I easily work with them and they directly communicates with me if there's there's something that I need or there's something that uh, needs improvement on my part. And also, as one of our core values as Thoughtful Communicator, I also, uh, from time to time, ask if I could do anything else, especially after doing some tasks. So yeah. that's it. <laughs> you beat me to the punch. I was, feeling, I was seeing thoughtful communication happening there. I was yeah. about to say, it's a perfect example. Our core values here spell the word great. I'm a big Jim Collins fanatic and his timeless principles. It's about gratitude, relationship-driven, everlong quest for improvement, attention to detail, and thoughtful communication. And those are all, all things that make us good to one another as, a, as an OA family and also what helps us be successful in supporting our, supporting our clients. So, well, this has been a, just a joy, joy, yes. um, to <laughs> spend this time with you and um, get to learn a little bit more about your journey and your path and just, just continues to reinforce with me. Every conversation I have with, with folks in the Philippines, um, just amazed at, at the, the grit and, and growth and, and just hear about your family and what you're doing to support your family and your two younger brothers. And um, I know they're wildly appreciative for what you're giving back to them and we appreciate what you're giving to us. So thanks for being with me. It's also an yeah. honor and a privilege. Thank you so much, Brad. Absolutely. Well, that closes out a really great episode here of Outsource Access Profiles, where we dive in and learn more about some of our team members here and learn about the Philippines and the people behind OA that kind of has helped us grow and, and expand. So if you want to learn more about us, go to outsourceaccess.com. All kinds of things on our website. You can fill out assessments, you can learn about our process, tons of videos, me talking more on videos, learning about how we operate, and some more of these profiles, which we'll be posting as well on our website if you want to learn more about us. So outsourceaccess.com. Thanks for being with us. Take care.